The AJ Drexel Autism Institute launched in 2012 as the first research organization dedicated to bringing a public health approach to understanding and addressing the challenges of autism spectrum disorders. The Institute's interdisciplinary team of world-class researchers explores autism's characteristics, causes, and consequences in order to develop community-based action to improve the quality of life for individuals of all ages with autism. The Institute is structured around three research programs and one center that work together to discover avoidable causes, identify symptoms, and effective interventions as early as possible, and promote a quality of life for those living with autism. Here's one great example of the exciting work being done at the A.J. Drexel Autism Institute. My name is Amanda. Uh, my name is Dennis. And this is Violet. The mission of the Autism Institute is that we research autism from a public health perspective. So what that means is we are looking at it from a population focus and trying to make real world impact with what we find. Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder and it emerges gradually in children but what we know is that their brains are actually atypical before we see the signs of it in the child's behavior. And so if we identify that a child is developing autism when they're very young, we have more opportunities to help them learn the kinds of social engagement and communication skills that will help them have better outcomes across the rest of their lives. When she was five months old, um, we noticed she wasn't making direct eye contact with us. Uh, we could be face to face with her and she wouldn't um, look you in the eye. Um, around that time, she started flapping her arms, um, which wasn't a big concern of ours, um, but it was when she turned a year old, uh, her speech wasn't where we thought it should be. There are some families who are concerned for quite some time that something may not be quite right about their child's development, but they don't know the answers and they don't even know who to turn to to find the answers. And so when Amanda brought her child for a checkup. The pediatrician was able to offer the screening study and then refer to us for a diagnostic evaluation. And so Amanda was able to come in and say, here are my concerns, what do I do? We had our concerns, but we really didn't know the path to take. So to have someone reach out to us and say, here, we'll show you the way through, it, it, was, it was a relief. It can get really lonely not having people understand. Um, so I think it's really important um, for people to be aware uh, so you don't feel secluded. With a lot of these different trainings and different interventions that we're working with and testing out with the different families, um, we're finding some really nice successes that children are utilizing better eye contact. That's a challenge for children with autism, being, you know, being in more of a social circumstance and being a little more comfortable in that situation. Those are all things that it might sound small to you know, anyone else, but for a family who is a child who, that's autistic, those are really big steps and really big milestones. The most helpful thing I learned being a part of the parent training study um, was learning to hold things up to my eye um, to encourage eye contact communication. That was incredibly helpful. It's really helped her engage with us a lot more. They got involved in some uh, practical studies to help learn best practices for at home. And then in addition to that, became a little more involved in the autism communities. The Eagles Autism Challenge was this race that the Eagles organization created for uh, three universities. They wanted to raise money for autism research and they ended up raising over $2 million. In order to make a change in a population, you have to start at the individual level. We're seeing families like Amanda who are coming in for a study and walking out with a different perspective and a different approach to how to best help their child learn. And we're also seeing it on a population level as we broaden to the entire community. These are the strategies that maximize detecting children when they're very young. And these are the approaches that primary care providers can take with all of their patients, not just the ones who are in a study, to help them get identified earlier and enter the optimal early intervention so that the children learn the most and have the best outcomes across their lives. We think it got easier. We, we know a lot more now than we did before. We know how to help her. Um, we've 
come up with ways to help her better during the day. Yeah, I mean, before the diagnosis, it was it was all uncertainty, and and now we have you know, a, a clear, clearer path. It's not just a family or a community. We're really trying to make this broader impact. So our thought is that the work we do here, once we identify what are the best ways within a smaller group, we can bring that to the population. Drexel's research initiatives have been really great for us. The services that they provide have provided for us and for the community. It's a real benefit. And we hope they continue with the work that they've been doing and that they find new, new opportunities and, and avenues to give back to the community and continue their research. Our goals really are to optimize the early identification for as many children as possible. And really that starts with the children in our studies, but then it generalizes to recommendations for community practice that will impact the entire population and not just those families who are lucky enough to get into a study or who live close enough to a research center.